Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over the internal real-time clock on the Arduino. The Arduino doesn't really have an internal clock, it just uses this millisecond, which is an interrupt-driven timer, and then you can keep track of seconds and minutes and stuff based upon that. This is the follow-up video. There was a previous video where I did one on the Nexion display. I'm going to show you the Nexion display in this one, and then I'm going to add the Arduino time to it. And then eventually there'll be a third video where I will add the uh, real-time clock chip. And I'm going to do a comparison of the three different types of real-time clocks. This is the basic startup uh, sample code that I use for all my videos, or not in my past videos, but recently I've changed it. I'm going to start using this going forward. And this just contains everything I need to write to the Nexion display. And it also adds this serial port right here in a software mode. And I call it Serial 2. And that way if you're using a Mega, you can just comment out these two lines. The code will work without any other changes, or at least should work. We'll see. Like I said, there's not a real internal clock in this. Um, you can get a library, but I think it does it pretty much the way I'm going to show you in this video. Um, this just goes into a little detail of maybe how they do it. I'm going to add these variables to it. So I'm going to have my time string, which will be that I'm going to combine all of the, the different aspects, the minutes, the seconds, the month, the day, into a string so that I can put it out the local serial monitor port and also upload it to the Nexion display. And then for each um, aspect of time, I'm going to have a variable, my seconds, my minutes, my hours, my days. Now since every month doesn't have the same number of days, I'm going to have a day array, and it's going to be... 1 through 12 for the 12 different months. If you'll notice I have 0 at the beginning because my months are numbered 1 through 12. Just like my days are 1 through 30 or 28 or 31, there isn't a 0 like there is in hours. And an array is 0 based. So I just, just to make it easy, I have set this to the first spot to 0. And we just won't use that location in the array. And then I've just set the year to 2020. So when we start this, it's going to be everything will be 0. It'll be day one of month one, or January 1st of 2020. Then like I went over before, this is just because I'm using a, a Pro Mini for this, and so I need to have a software serial port. And I've got pin two and three. Three is my transmit pin, and that's how I connect to the Nexion display. In this case, we're not going to send anything back from the Nexion to the Arduino, so all I need is pin three. And then I initialize both my serial ports. And then just for a test, I have pin 13, which is your onboard LED. And so I can turn it on and off just, for, uh, just to make sure the Arduino is functioning. In my main loop, I have three things that I always leave in there, even if I don't use them. Like in this case, I'm never going to be checking for if Serial 2 has data from the Nexion, because I'm not going to be receiving data from the Nexion. I'll use that later, but not in this example. And then down here, if the Nexion would happen to send data, it, it ends with a certain character string. It's a set of zero FFs, if you go up to the top. I have this end character string, which is just a series of FFs. I did it in a way so it's obvious um, what you're doing when you're sending these FFs. Anyone that works with Nexion displays would understand that pretty well. And what I use is I use an asynchronous delay, and I'm just checked from my milliseconds. And if the milliseconds is greater than my asynchronous delay plus whatever my delay length is, which in this case is 500 milliseconds, I'll be changing that to one second. But for right now, we'll leave it at 500 milliseconds. I guess I should verify that it is. And yeah, right now it's 500 milliseconds. And just so I don't forget, I'm just going to do it now. So every second, this is going to execute. And when this is not executing, the other um, aspects of the loop will execute. That's why it's called asynchronous. It does, there's not the delay statement. It just keeps executing. I also put some error checking in here because the milliseconds is going to count up to 4 trillion. 294,967,295 and then it's going to go back to zero. So if my async delay, which is going to count up with the milliseconds, were to exceed 
a certain value, then I need to reset it. And that's all this does. Someday I might put up a video that better explains this. If it hasn't exceeded this tremendously large number, then I just add the delay to it. So then the next time through it, it just runs it every second. And then I have a flash the LED. So that's all that's happening right now. And just to show you, I have my Pro Mini right here, and you can see it's flashing. It's actually flashing on the 500 milliseconds. And then I have my Nexion display. And this is showing the current time and date, and you can see that it's counting. So I have that portion done. And like I said, there's a previous video on that if you wanna go back and look at it. We're gonna be populating this field today. So every second that this delay executes, I want it to increment the seconds by one, so the seconds plus plus. But if the seconds are greater than 59, I want to reset the seconds to zero. And then I want to go ahead and increment the minutes. So that means every 60 seconds we're going to add, we'll increment the minutes. And then after we increment the minutes, we want to see, are the, min are the minutes greater than 59 if they are? then we want to reset it to zero, and that means that we've hit another hour point, so we want to go ahead and increment the hours. And as you probably guessed, we have the next one we check for the hours. If it's gotten greater than 23, this is where you could add that 12 hour clock if you wanted to do a little more logic here. But if it's greater than 23, we're going to set it equal to zero and we're going to increment the days. Now the days is where it gets a little bit more tricky because we have that array up there, the day array. So on the days, um, if the days are greater than the day array, and then this is where the months matter because the first time you run it, the month would be one. And so if the day array is greater than wherever that's sitting on the first month up here, it'd be 31. So once it hits 31, then we're going to increment the months, and then it's going to be pointing at February, which is 28 days. I don't have leap year figured in here. And then the last one is going to be the year. So once the months have incremented, if the months are greater than 12, we'll set it back to 1, and then we'll increment the years. And then you got to make sure all of your all of your curly braces line up. Well, it'll compile, but it looks nicer this way. I'm gonna double check this right now. And it worked. So if the seconds are greater than 59, reset them and increment the minutes. If the minutes are greater than 59, reset them and increment the hours, then the days, then the months, and then the year. But what we're, we haven't done is we haven't output anything. So now we have to build a string to output the data. We'll be building the string as we concatenate onto it from uh, left to right. So we'll, we'll be putting our, our month and then our day and then our year and then a dash and then our hours and a colon, minutes and seconds. So this will be the format that we're shooting for. So the first thing we'll do is we'll clear our time screen time string just in case there's something in it and then if months are less than 10 we're going to add a zero and that'll keep it um, so if the month was one it'll be zero one and we're going to keep two digits for everything except for the year and that way when we do the comparison between the Arduino and the Nexion everything should line up and look nice. There are other ways to do this but I'm going to do it this way um, just because I think it's more it's a little more clear this way so the first thing we'll do is we'll add the months, and we're going to add a zero if it's less than 10, and then we're going to add the months. And we're going to convert it to a string, and then add it to the string. So we'll be casting it, because this is an integer. And then we're going to add our slash, our forward slash, and then if days are less than 10, we're going to add that zero also, and then we're going to add the days. And we'll cast it also. And then we're going to add another forward slash. And then we're going to add the years. We don't have to test the years. We know it's going to be 2020. I'm not going to set it to 100 or anything like that. And then we have our space dash space. And then we'll add our time. So then we're going to do the same thing with our time. If our hours are less than 10, we're going to add a zero. 
and then we're going to add the hours after casting them. But in this case, we'll do a colon instead. And then we're going to check for our minutes and add a zero if needed. And then we're going to add the minutes and another colon. And then we're going to do the same thing with the seconds. And then we're going to print it out on the serial monitor. I'm going to go ahead and run this right now. Or first, I'm just going to compile it, make sure I built my string. With the cut and paste, it's usually pretty accurate. And so I have it. And now I'm going to upload this to the Pro Mini. One of the reasons I'm using the Pro Mini is because I'm just kind of wondering how accurate it is and how easy it is to work with. So I may get some failures in the video, but we'll see what happens. And you can see our seconds are counting up and we have our date. But just so we can see some things change, I'm going to change the seconds to like 40 and then we'll put 59, 23, and uh, we'll change this to 12 and uh, the last day of the month. And in December, there's 31 days. So if we were to set the seconds to 40, so we only have to wait, or maybe 50, so we'll have to wait 10 seconds. We're going to set the minutes to 59. We're going to set the hours to 23. We're going to set the day to 31, because it's the 31st. And we're going to set the month to 12. So after 10 seconds, this should cause this to go to 2021 and everything else should reset to zero. Or to one, the days should go to one and the months should go to one. So let's up, let's get the, uh, we'll upload it and then I'll move back over to the serial monitor. And there we go. 12, 31, 20, 20, 56. And we got one, one, 20, 21 and it seems to have worked. The only way to truly test it would be to sit here for a year. And I just don't quite have the patience for that. But now the question is, can we get this uploaded to the, uh, to the uh, Vection display? If you're only interested in the real-time clock, uh, this might not interest you, but these Nexion displays are pretty cheap and they're kind of fun. This video isn't meant to be a, a, a tutorial on the Nexion display, so I'm just going to type in the command. What I have is I have it set up on serial port 2 or the name Serial 2. If you had a Mega, it would be Serial 2. This is a software serial in the Pro Mini. And then you just print. And uh, the name for this uh, text field on the Nexion is T3. So you assign the text equal to. But here's where you have to escape out an extra quote because the text has to be surrounded by quotes. And in order to send a quote from the Arduino through the serial port, you have to put this backslash in front of it. So we're going to send this string with the quote enclosed, and then we're going to add the timestamp, or the time string. And then we have to add another quote on the other side of the time string. Of the time string. And then we have to add our end characters. That's those three FFs. We'll compile this to make sure I type that in correctly. And now I'm going to bring the camera up. And our hope is that this changes. I have this yellow wire right here connected to pin 3. I don't know if you can really read that or not. I'll try to zoom in on it. And it should write out to this display. And there we go, 12-31-2020. Oh, that's right, because we set everything up to that. And there we go, 1-1-2021. After 10 seconds, it reset. So it's working just as we would expect. My plan to get uh, in the next video is to have the chip, uh, an external real-time clock chip, display the real-time or the time right down here. And then I'm going to program this button when you press it to um, set all of those to the exact same time. And then I'm hoping to find a, uh, a UPS or something I can plug this into and then take a picture of it every day or week or I don't know how, how fast it will get an error between the, the three types. Maybe never. Maybe it will run for years and years and it will be the exact same time. Uh, we'll find out. So in this video uh, I just set up some variables to hold the different values and I created a day array for each, for how many days are in each month. 
And then I used an asynchronous loop so that every second it runs this loop and that it increments through the different variables. And then I, I uh, concatenate a string together. And then I print that string. And I also send it to the serial port. It's a pretty simple test and it works pretty well. The internal real-time clock, I've never used it for anything. I have no idea if it's accurate. I'm going to do something where I'm turning off a projector in the middle of the night at a school I work at, and so I want to know which type of real-time clock I can use. There's a possibility that I can hook that next-gen display and use the RS-232 out of it and control the uh, projector directly. So I'm kind of interested. I've not heard the best things about the real-time clock in the next-gen, but I'm going to figure it out. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.